Hi, my name is Julia Atwood and I am the mock trial coach and um, our attorney coaches uh, are going to be the judges for this case, so David Martin and Shannon Heingardner. So welcome to our run through of the court case of the United States of America v. Nat Hart. Uh, so right now I'm going to write, read through the summary of the case so you'll have some background as you watch our mock trial team perform it. So on the evening of September 7th, 2018, the defendant, Nat Hart, a police officer in the town of Gavish, Massachusetts, shot and killed Ray Lugansky, the cousin of a well-known Tenerbian activist by the name of Gray Humansky. The two cousins look remarkably similar, and the shooting was clearly a case of mistaken identity. However, as the result of several prior interactions between the defendant and Humansky, the government contends that the defendant shot and killed the victim in violation of U.S. Law 18, Section 4, 242. An indictment was issued charging Nat Hart with the violation. And so now you will see the reenactment of this case. All rise. Hear ye, hear ye. The mock trial court of the United States of America is now in session. The Honorable Justice Martin presiding. All persons having business herein can now be heard. You may be seated. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is David Martin. I'll be the presiding judge in this in this trial. It's been my uh, my privilege to be the attorney coach for this the fantastic mock trial team. Uh, for this season. Uh, I also want you to know, so normally this is conducted as a bench trial where the judge not only presides over the court, um, but then issues the final ruling. And so the attorneys argue to the judge. The judge rules not only on the law, but also on the facts and finds that the defendants either guilty or, defendant not guilty or not guilty. In this case, we're going to run it as a jury trial with all of you as the jury. Um, so pay attention <laughs> because at the end, um, maybe what we'll do is ask the attorneys to step out for a moment and then we'll, you, you guys can deliberate uh, and then we'll ask you to just raise your hands for guilty or not guilty, or we'll come up with some system uh, to render a verdict. So pressure's on, guys. Um, so I do have a, a co-judge who will be joining me shortly, so we'll leave a seat for her. And I also have this robe. <laughs> All right, so court is in session. Uh, this is uh, United States of America versus Nat Hart, docket 118CR43309-1. B zero B O N six. Uh, are the parties ready to begin? Yes, Your Honor. Prosecution, the defense. Yes, Your Honor. Fantastic. Are you ready with opening statements? Uh, first, Your Honor, we have the stipulations agreed upon between the two parties. Excellent. <coughs> May I first <coughs> Uh, Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to have the stipulations agreed upon between the two parties be marked as Exhibit A for identification purposes. So marked. Uh, that is all. Any objection? No objections, Your Honor. Great. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, but before I proceed, may my co-counsel members introduce themselves? Yes, please. Alyssa Cook. Say good day, Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Nick Delisha. Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Adidi Janagre. Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Ben Burns. And I'm Matthew Katz. May I proceed? You may. Your Honor, we, the prosecution, representing the United States of America, stand before you today seeking justice for the death of Ms. Ray Lugansky which was caused by one of the enforcers of our very own laws. Because of this significant role in our society, we must ensure that police officers have the utmost honor and integrity. Your Honor, by no means are we attempting to discount the difficulty that comes along with being a police officer. Rather, we are here today because of the conduct of one police officer. In order to understand why Officer Hart shot Ray Lugansky on the night of September 7th, 2018, it is first essential to know that Officer Hart believed Ray Lugansky was, in fact, Gray Humansky. Stipulation 6, agreed upon between the two parties, states that Gray Humansky and Ray Lugansky have the exact same physical features, a fact which you will later learn is fundamental to this case. 
Officer Hart's violent vendetta began on May 25th, 2018. That night, Ms. Humansky encountered a thief while at one of her family stores in Gavish, Massachusetts. Today, Ms. Humansky will testify to the fact that she was forced to ultimately shoot and kill this thief because her life was in danger. That night, Officer Hart was a responding officer. Today, multiple witnesses will testify that Officer Hart was angry regarding the fact that Ms. Humansky was never charged with any sort of crime regarding this incident. Even the defendant will admit that she wrote more than 10 memos to the Gavish Police Chief attempting to get Ms. Humansky in trouble with the law. Your Honor, when this didn't work, it became the crux of Officer Hart's violent vendetta, manifesting in the continual harassment of Ms. Humansky. You will hear the first example of harassment, when Gray Humansky, as well as Lee Vaganal, an undercover FBI agent and witness for the prosecution, testified to a traffic stop made by Officer Hart on August 11, 2018, for speeding. Both will testify to Officer Hart's obsessive conduct on that night. Furthermore, Ms. Humansky will testify to the progression of Officer Hart's obsession when she references yet another traffic stop made just a week later. Specifically, Ms. Humansky will testify to Officer Hart's violent conduct on that night. On the night of September 7th, 2018, the pinnacle event of Officer Hart's violent vendetta would occur. At around 8.30 p.m., Officer Hart encountered who he thought was Gray Humansky. In reality, it was Ray Lugansky. As Ms. Lugansky left the Wicked Vinyl store that night, Officer Hart exited her police vehicle to apprehend the suspect. Today, we expect that the defense's Mac Blood will testify to the lack of clarity regarding Officer Hart's warnings that, on that night. Furthermore, both Officer Hart and Mac Blood will testify that Ms. Lugansky, at one point during the encounter, turned around and proceeded to walk away from Officer Hart. Now, at that cru crucial moment in their encounter, what did Officer Hart decide to do? Well, Your Honor, in accordance with her violent vendetta, Officer Hart unlocked her weapon, escalating the situation. Today, Ms. Aubrey Oliger, an expert in police practices and misconduct, will testify that Officer Hart pulled her weapon on an unarmed, motionless individual who had her hands in the air. Ultimately, Your Honor, Officer Hart shot and killed Ms. Lugansky. Ms. Lugansky was a completely innocent individual who, for factors outside of her control, became a victim of Officer Hart's violent vendetta. Your Honor, today we will show, beyond a reasonable doubt, that Officer Hart, while acting under the color of state law, willfully used excessive force while effecting a seizure of Ms. Ray Lugansky. Officer Hart's violent vendetta is one filled with detrimental decisions made by an officer who is simply unable to relinquish her personal priorities. Based off the evidence we will present today, we ask that you find Officer Hart guilty of the charges she faces. Thank you. Defense? Good afternoon, Your Honor. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Donna Burgess and my co-counsel, John Moylan. Yes. Victoria Farrington. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Kai Schermacher. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Michael Macy. Good afternoon, Your Honor. And Veronica Martinez. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Welcome. I will be providing the opening for defense. May I proceed? You may. On the night of September 7, 2018, a fatal shooting occurred in Gavish, Massachusetts. A police officer shot and killed a suspect. Your Honor, the prosecution would have you believe that this is the case of a renegade officer taking the law into her own hands. However, this is not what the evidence shows. On the contrary, this case is much simpler. Our defendant, Nat Hart, has been a dedicated member of the Gavish Police Department for 34 years and was merely trying to do her job when placed in an impossible situation. This case boils down to three key factors. One, Ray Lugansky resisted arrest on the night of September 7th. Two, Ray Humansky had a dangerous and violent reputation in the town of Gavish. And three, Officer Nat Hart was reasonable in her use of self-defense. Officer Nat Hart will testify that on the night of September 7th, she was merely doing her job, enforcing an existing arrest warrant, as stated in Stipulation 5. Ray Lugansky 
directly contradicted Officer Nat Hart's commands. When Officer Nat Hart called out to the suspect, the suspect walked away, and when Officer Nat Hart directed the suspect to raise their hands, the suspect hesitated. Every action taken by Ray Luganski communicated to Officer Nat Hart that this was a suspect resisting arrest and becoming a threat to her life. Then, Mr. Luganski did something that made it clear to Officer Nat Hart that her life was now in danger. Mr. Luganski lowered his hand, lowered her hand into her jacket pocket. Mommy. Officer Nat Hart did what she felt like she had to do when faced with a suspect who was resisting arrest and becoming a threat to her life. However, this is not the only evidence which is important to consider in this case. As expert for the defense, Gail Gordon, an expert in crime scene investigation and reconstruction, and a former police chief for the city of Boston, will testify that in order to understand the true reasonableness of the circumstances at hand, we must understand the totality of the circumstances. This means looking at more than just the night of the shooting, but rather considering the reputation of Mr. Humansky. A very important, albeit confusing, factor in this case is that Officer Nat Hart did not know that she was shooting at Ray Lugansky. In fact, she did not even know that Ray Lugansky existed. Officer Nat Hart confused Ray with her identical cousin, Bray Humansky. This only adds to the reasonableness of the circumstances as Gray Humansky was known to have a dangerous and violent reputation in the town of Gavish. The relationship between Hart and Humansky began on the night of May 25th, 2018, when Officer Nat Hart will testify to receiving a 911 phone call to the Humansky store. Upon arriving at the store, there were no signs of a break-in, but Officer, Huma Officer Nat Hart found Gray Humansky standing over a dead body. <coughs> Officer Nat Hart will then testify to the two routine traffic stops during which Gray Humansky demonstrated erratic and disobedient behavior. Officer Nat Hart knew five things going into the night of September 7th. Gray Humansky owned a gun. Gray Humansky was not afraid to show it. Gray Humansky had a tendency to escalate situations and a temper and she wore the gun in a holster on her right shoulder. These two factors, resistance and reputation, will show that in the totality of the circumstances, Officer Nat Hart was reasonable in her use of force. In this case of a reasonable reaction by a respected officer, there is a clear burden of proof. The prosecution must prove beyond reasonable doubt that Officer Nat Hart is guilty of willfully depriving someone of their constitutional rights. We will elaborate further on the relevant case law in our closing arguments. However, as you listen to the evidence for this case, please keep in mind that United States law establishes a wide zone of protection for those who are brave enough to wear the badge. We ask that at the close of this trial, you find Officer Nat Hart not guilty, as her reasonable reaction was clearly justified by the totality of the circumstances at hand. Thank you, Your Honor. Prosecution ready with their first witness. Yes, Your Honor. At this time, the prosecution calls Ms. Gray Humansky to the stand. So I would we'll swear you in first. Would you stand up, please? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. May I proceed? You may. What is your name and current address? My name is Greg Humansky, and I currently live at 175 Forest Street in Martin's Landing, but I previously lived at 340 Parker Street in Sotoville, Massachusetts. And how are you related to this case? My cousin, Ray Luganski, was killed by the defendant, Officer Nat Hart, and I have also had multiple altercations with Officer Hart that are relevant to this case. What incident occurred on May 25th, 2018, while you were at one of your family stores in Gavish, Massachusetts? I was working at one of our family stores where we keep a majority of our money when a thief broke in and uh, they pointed a weapon at me and that was caused me and I was forced to shoot them. And how was this incident with the thief resolved? I was never charged with anything regarding the incident because I have a license to carry a concealed weapon and I also killed this person in self-defense. Um, I was very distraught though following the incident because I was forced to hurt another person. And after it was resolved, what did Officer Hart decide to do? 
When Officer Hart learned that I hadn't been charged with anything regarding the incident, she tried on multiple occasions to get me charged with murder by speaking to the district attorney. I failed to see how Your Honor, if I may be heard. Yes. Uh, I do not think the fact of, or the debate on the fact of, like, how Ms. Humansky learned this knowledge of the district attorney trying to press charges on her really matters. I think just the simple fact that the district attorney was trying to press charges on her matters, if that makes sense. It does make sense. <laughs> Objection over. Uh, would you like me to repeat the question? Yes, please. Uh, after this incident with the thief was resolved, what did Officer Hart decide to do? As I previously, previously stated, the Officer Hart tried multiple times to get me charged with murder by speaking to the district attorney, and when that didn't work, she began harassing me to the point where I thought she might even be stalking me. And what are some examples of the Officer Hart's uh, harassment? On August 11th, I was pulled over with Lee Bugnall in the car because according to Officer Hart, I was speeding. And then on August 18th, I was pulled over again, although Officer Hart did not provide immediate justification for why she was pulling me over. And when you were pulled over just a week later on August 18th, 2018, what was the first thing that you asked Officer Hart? I asked Officer Hart to stop harassing me. And what was her response? Her face turned red and she pulled me out of my car and she slammed me up against it. And then she asked me a question. And what was this question? She asked me if I was carrying a weapon. I said no, but there was a gun in my club glove compartment, and then she proceeded. Um, Your Honor, if I may be heard, the defense here claims that Officer Hart had knowledge of Ms. Humansky's uh, gun habits, and considering that's a fact that they, uh, it's very crucial to their case, I believe that it's very relevant. It does seem relevant to me, so overruled. Would you like me to, would you like me to repeat the question? Yes, please. Uh, after searching your vehicle, or, uh, what did, uh, question did Officer Hart ask you? She asked me if I was carrying a weapon, and I said no, but there was a gun in my glove compartment, and then she proceeded to rifle through my car with no explanation of why she was doing this. And after searching your vehicle, what did Officer Hart inform you of? She told me I was being charged with negligent operation of a motor vehicle, gave me a citation, and told me I received something in the mail. And at that moment, what do you notify Officer Hart of? I told her that I had recently moved, so the address on my license was wrong. And what was his reaction to this? Um, she smiled and said that's really all I needed to know, with nothing else. Your Honor, may I approach the bench? Mm -hmm. Your Honor, at this time, the prosecution asked that this document be marked as Exhibit B for identification purposes. Any objection? Consider it marked. Um, may I approach the witness? Yes. Ms. Humansky, what is this document? This is a copy of the summons that was sent to my old address. And how is it related to this case? Um, well, it proves that even after I specifically told Officer Hart I had moved, she never changed the address. May I approach the witness? Yes. May I approach the bench? Your Honor, at this time, the prosecution asks that Exhibit B uh, is entered into evidence as Exhibit 2 for the prosecution. Any objection? No objections, Your Honor. Thank so you, Your Honor. Uh, also, Your Honor, at this time, the prosecution uh, asks that uh, this document be published to the court in accordance with Rule 504. Any objection to that? No, Your Honor. Specifically, uh, I ask, I uh, direct your attention to the box titled Name and Address of Defendant. Which reads, 340 Parker Street, Sullivanville, Mass. Thank you. Um, why did you not attend your court date on uh, September 6, 2018? I never knew I had a court date because I never received the summons. And when was your court date in relation to the night of the shooting? Um, the court date occurred one day before the shooting. Finally, Ms. Humansky, how would you describe your relationship with Officer Hart? Um, clearly, Officer Hart and I did not get along. Um, and I think these disagreements really began after she tried to get me charged for murder. And I have no idea why an officer of the law has been treating me like this and for something that I have done nothing wrong. No further questions, Your Honor. Cross examination of this witness. Yes. My name is Tasha Marker, and I'll be providing a cross examination of Mr. Kaminsky. You may proceed. You may. 
The first time you met Officer Hurt, you were sending over a body, is that correct? I had just defended myself. But you were sending over a body, yes or no? I, technically I was, yes. And you had shot said body? Yes, as they had broken into my store. Yes or no will suffice, thank you. You shot them in the head, is that correct? Um, yes. And you shot instinctively? I was trying to protect myself. So yes. Yes. Uh, you had, you shot and killed this person because you believe they may have pointed a weapon at you? I, yes, they pointed a weapon at me. Uh, you had been drinking previously this night, is that also correct? I have no recollection of that. To the best of your knowledge, after the night, was any evidence of a weapon ever discovered in the store? Objection, Your Honor. Scope. Um, as the weapon was in her store and she was the one who murdered the man, I believe it would be fair to know if she knew where the weapon went, if there, if there was a weapon there. Your Honor, if I may be heard, Ms. Humansky had nothing to do with the investigation of this incident. She was just simply a uh, part of the incident. And you're asked to say your question again? Um, you, to the best of your knowledge, no weapon was ever discovered. Yeah, so with the phrase, best, to the best of your knowledge, seems appropriate, so objection overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, would you like me to repeat the question? Yes, please. To the best of your knowledge, no weapon was ever discovered after this incident? Uh, I don't believe so. Uh, and no investigation was ever conducted after you shot this man, is that correct? I shot this person in self-defense, so yes. And you were never charged for this again, yeah. yes or no? No, because I was shot, I shot this person in self-defense. On August 18th, you served into oncoming traffic before you were pulled over, is that correct? I have no recollection of that. When Officer Hart initially pulled you over, you did not cooperate with his, his question to get out of the car? I asked why I was being pulled over. But you did not? Uh, you did not cooperate with the officer, yes or no? I was executing my right to know why I was being pulled over. I am not asking whether you can ask or not. I'm asking whether you did cooperate or not. No, then. Thank you. Officer Hart asked if you had a weapon, is that correct? Yes, she did. And you told the, your officer that it was in your shoulder holster? Yes in, or no? In my car, yes. You moved houses on July 1st, 2019, is that correct? Yes, I did. And you were pulled over on August 18th, uh, around 48 days later? I guess so, yes. So you haven't bothered to change the address 48 days after your move? No. So you believe it's the officer's responsibility to change your documentation on an official document Objection after your move? Opinion. As this is a lay witness's opinion on something not um, relevant, uh, not, not to the overall issue of this case, it is allowed. Uh, objection overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. Would you like me to re-ask the question? Yes, please. So you believe it's the officer's responsibility to change your official documentation on your license 48 days after your move? After I specifically told her that I had moved so the summons would be sent to the wrong address, yes. On the summons, you are instructed to go to court on September 6th, 2018, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And if you failed to appear, a warrant would have been issued, is that <laughs> also correct? Yes, but I never received the summons. Thank you. No further questions. Any redirect for this witness? No, Your Honor. You may step down. <coughs> I'd like to call your next witness. Yes, Your Honor. At this time, the prosecution would like to call Ms. Lee Bagenau to the stand. Ms. Bagenau, do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Sethur Deifin, and I'll be providing the direct examination of Ms. Lee Bugganoff. May I proceed? You may. Can you please state your name and occupation for the court? My name is Lee Bugganoff, and I have been an undercover agent within the FBI since 2011. And prior to working for the FBI, what work did you perform? Objection, Your Honor. According to Rule 401, this is not relevant to this case. Your Honor, we're simply um, attempting to build um, my witness's credibility, as you will see in the cross-examination that the, that the defense would um, like to lower my witness's credibility. Your Honor, if I may be heard, um, the purpose of Lee Bogdanov's testimony today is as an eyewitness and not as an expert witness and does not need to be credible for her field of work. Objection overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. Would you like me to repeat the question? Yes, please. Prior to working for the FBI, what work did you perform? 
Prior to working for the FBI, I was a small arms artillery and repair officer in the United States Army. After this, I was a police officer. I was on the force for three years and worked on multiple undercover sting operations. And what work do you perform for the FBI? As an undercover agent for the FBI, I infiltrate criminal rings throughout the country, posing as an arms broker. Most of these cases involve illegal drug sales, the purchase of illegal weapons, and money laundering. And as a result of infiltrating these drug and arm rings, what knowledge have you gained? I have extensive knowledge regarding the manufacturing and sale of drugs. Your Honor, I still fail to see relevance on her knowledge of the Um, Your Honor, if I may be heard, um, Mr. Lee was investigating Greg Umansky, the defendant in this case, throughout this entire um, process of this case. So her knowledge of her investigation and her knowledge of drugs, which is what she was investigating, is, is extremely relevant to the case. Yes. Objection overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. Would you like me to repeat the question? Sure. As a result of infiltrating these drug and arm rings, what knowledge have you gained? I have knowledge about the manufacturing and sale of legal drugs, specifically methamphetamine and fentanyl. And how are you involved in this specific case? Earlier this year, the FBI received an anonymous tip that Gray Humansky was connected to illegal drugs, so I was sent to investigate. And during this investigation, did you find any compromising evidence on your assignment, Gray Humansky? I found no connections between Gray and illegal drugs, and she displayed extremely little knowledge of weapons as well. And can you describe the events you witnessed when you were outside of the Humansky store with um, Gray Humansky on the night of May 25th, 2018? I was in a car outside of one of Gray's family stores. Gray had gone inside the store. After this, I heard gunshots come from within the store. And was Gray Humansky charged with anything as a result of these events? Gray was not charged with anything. Officer Hart was ordered to release her immediately. And can you describe Officer Hart's reaction to Gray Humansky not being charged with anything? Officer Hart shouted, I don't care who this is or who their parents are. And did you and Gray Humansky have another encounter with Officer Hart on August 11th, 2018? Yes, I was in the car with Gray and Gray was driving. Officer Hart pulled us over and said that Gray had been speeding. And to the best of your knowledge, were you and Gray Humansky speeding um, during this encounter? From what I could tell, since I was inside the vehicle at the time, I did not believe that Gray was speeding. And can you please describe how Officer Hart behaved towards Gray Humansky during the speeding pull over? Officer Hart said to Gray, don't think I've forgotten about you and I'll be watching you. And can you please describe how Officer Hart behaved towards yourself during the speeding pull over? Officer Hart said to me, watch your back. The last person I saw with Gray ended up with a bullet in their head. And at any point during the encounter, did you see Gray Humansky put her hands in the form of a gun and point it at Officer Hart? Uh, I never saw Gray put her hands in the form of a gun. What were you doing on the night of September 7th prior to Officer Hart arriving at the Humansky store? <laughs> to further my investigation, I have, I have been conducting night surveillance outside of the Humansky family stores. Up until that night, I had not seen any unusual activity. But on that night, I was parked in an alleyway across the street. It was about 8 o'clock. And did you see Officer Hart pass by the store in a police cruiser? I saw a police cruiser drive past the store once, and this happened multiple times over the course of 30 minutes. And at what point did Officer Hart park the vehicle? After the police cruiser drove past the store, it pulled up outside of the alley and I heard the engine turn off. And when did Officer Hart get out of the vehicle? Officer Hart did not get out of the vehicle until someone resembling Gray Humansky had walked out of a nearby music store. And at any point during the night, did you see or hear Officer Hart call for backup? I did not see or hear Officer Hart call for backup at any point. And can you describe the interaction between Officer Hart and Ray Lugansky in the moments leading up to the shooting? Officer Hart shouted at Ray to stop and to put her hands up. And did you see Ray follow these instructions? Yes, after she was told to do so, I could see Ray with her hands in the air. And at any point during the night, did you see Ray Lugansky reach into her jacket? I never saw Ray reach into her jacket. And after Ray followed these instructions, what did the officer proceed to do? Officer Hart had her handgun pointed towards Ray. And just before the victim was shot, did you hear any verbal communication between Officer Hart and Ray Lugansky? Officer Hart shouted at Ray, just give me a reason to shoot. And after Officer Hart said this, what occurred? After this, I heard the gunshot and saw the victim on the ground. No further questions, Your Honor. Cross-examination. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Victoria Farrington, and I will be conducting the cross-examination of the program. May I proceed? 
ช่ไหม
Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Ben Burns, and I'll be performing the direct examination of Ms. Margaret Oliver. May I please proceed? Uh, could you please state your name for the court? Yes, my name is Aubrey Oliver. Uh, how did you become involved in this case? I'm an employee for the Federal Institute to support local law enforcement, and I frequently consult on these types of cases. What affidavits did you review in preparation for this trial? I reviewed the affidavits of Greg Humansky, Lee Buchanal, and Officer Nathart. Will you receive any compensation for providing this testimony? Uh, no, I'm a salaried employee of my company. Could you please outline your educational background for the court? Yes, I have a bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Wisconsin. What was your time working as a lecturer in the Department of Criminal Justice at the University of Nevada, Nevada Las Vegas, mainly focused on? At the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, my research was focused on uh, reducing the number of altercations between police officers and the public. While working with the Independent Police Review Authority in Chicago, how many cases did you work on? I reviewed about 100 cases with my time at the IPRA. Where did you go to work after leading, leaving the IPRA in Chicago? After the IPRA, I went to conduct research at the University of Nevada in Las Vegas. How many publications do you have in this field? I have six publications in my fields. Could you please specify what these publications mainly focus on? Yes, these publications are focused on police officers' behaviors and how these behaviors affect their interactions with the public. Did you prepare a curriculum vitae for this trial? Yes, I did. I uh, may I approach the bench. You may. Uh, at this time, I would like I would ask that this um, document be marked Exhibit C for identification purposes. So marked. I may approach the witness. May I approach the witness? You may. Um, Ms. Oliver, can you please identify this document? Yes, this is my curriculum vitae. Um, what is contained in this document? This is a complete and accurate list of my educational and professional history. Um, may I approach the witness? Yes. And may I approach the bench? Uh, Your Honor, at this time, I would like to ask that the document which has been marked Exhibit C for identification be entered as in, into evidence as Exhibit 3 for the prosecution. Any objection? No, Your Honor. So marked. So admitted. Uh, and at this time, Your Honor, the prosecution would like to qualify Ms. Oliger as an expert in the fields of police protocol and misconduct. Any objection? Yes, Your Honor. Do the defense feel that Ms. Oliger is not qualified in this field since she has never been a police officer? Your Honor, um, the prosecution would like to contend that Ms. Oliger um, does not need to be a police officer to be qualified as an expert in police protocol and misconduct. She's not being an expert in being a police officer. She's merely being an expert in, she's merely testifying as an expert in what the correct uh, protocol is and what misconduct would qualify as. So, any further response? Uh, no, Your Honor. Objection overruled. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Were there any other exhibits from this case that you had access to? Yes, I had access to a diagram of the scene the night that Ray Lugansky was shot. Uh, Your Honor, I the bench. Uh, at this time, I would like to ask this document be marked Exhibit D for identification purposes. So marked. Can you approach the bench? Yes. Uh, may I approach the bench? Yes. Um, Ms. Oliver, uh, can you please identify the document that I'm handing you? Yes, this document was given to me by the Gavish Police Department, and it is a diagram of the night that um, Ray Lugansky was shot. Uh, may I approach the witness? And may I approach the bench? Uh, at this time, I would ask that the document which has been marked Exhibit D be entered as evidence as Exhibit 4 for the prosecution. Any objection? Yes, Your Honor. We, the defense, feel that this document would be considered hearsay, as the only way that Mrs. Bullinger would have obtained it is through uh, an outside source Outside the uh, Your Honor, may be heard? Yes. Uh, I believe this document, as it was acquired from the Gavish Police, Gavish Police Department, falls under the business records hearsay objection, an exception. Your Honor, if I may, this objection, or this exception, only applies to um, usual business records. I would argue that this is not a usual business record. Uh, Your Honor, if I may, uh, I would. I don't see how this would be an unusual business record, as if as it is a document which Ms. Oliver would use in her investigation of a trial. So my understanding of the business record exemption is that this would not qualify as a business record exemption. I would agree, and we have not heard any evidence from the police department that this was prepared in their normal course of procedure. Okay. 
So, objection sustained. Thank you, Your Honor. What is police protocol in regards to aiming and shooting a firearm? A police officer may only raise and shoot his firearm if a suspect also possesses a dangerous weapon and the police officer feels that the suspect is a threat to his safety. At the time of the altercation, was Ms. Lugansky armed? There was no evidence that Ray Lugansky was armed. Was it necessary for Officer Hart to pull out her firearm if Ms. Lugansky was approximately 20 yards away and never pulled a weapon? Uh, no, the facts of the situation did not necessitate Officer Hart pulling her firearm. In Lee Buginall's affidavit, he stated that Officer Hart yelled, quote, just give me a reason to shoot. Is this a contributing factor to the escalation of this event? Uh, yes, I believe that this utterance, along with many of the other uh, utterances of Officer Hart that night, were intended to escalate the situation. In accordance with Ms. Lugansky and Officer Hart's previous interactions, do you believe there was tension between the two? Objection, Your Honor. You defense feel that this question calls for um, Ms. Lugansky to speculate outside her field that she has not been qualified as a psychiatrist. Uh, Your Honor, may I be heard? Please. Uh, I'm not asking the witness to professionally evaluate uh, any signs of uh, like a tension between uh, Ms. Lugansky and Officer Hart. I'm merely asking her for her to identify tension that is clearly stated in the, two, the affidavits she has reviewed. In that, in that capacity, if you make it clear that the witness is relying only on what's been read in the affidavit, the objection would be overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. Would you like me to re-ask the question? Yes, please. In accordance with Ms. Lugansky and Officer Hart's previous interactions, do you believe there was tension between the two? No, yeah. counsel, you're actually asking a different question than you offered for the reason you wanted to ask the question. So you just asked her as to her belief, and you told us that you were not eliciting testimony as to her belief. I would suggest you reword the question and ask her what from the affidavits she relied upon in assessing tension. Okay, thank you. Um, in accordance with the the affidavits you have reviewed, uh, is there any evidence of t tension between Ms. Lugansky and Officer Hart? Yes, from what I gathered from the testimonies of Officer Hart and Greg Humansky, there was significant animosity between the two, which was clearly evident on that night. Um, from the affidavits you reviewed, uh, is there evidence that Officer Hart's actions were made out of fear? Objection, Your Honor. This clearly pertains to the motions of Officer Hart, which, as her stated before, Ms. Olinger is not qualified to answer. Can you repeat the question? Um, in the affidavits you reviewed, is there any evidence that Officer Hart's actions were out of view? And what's your response to the objection? Um, I, my question was that if there was any signs of um, actions of fear in the affidavits she reviewed, I'm not asking for her belief on whether or not, um, I'm not asking for her belief, I'm just asking if she observed anything in the affidavits she reviewed. Make this all. So, overall. Thank you, Your Honor. Sorry, can you ask the question again? In the affidavits you reviewed, was there any evidence uh, that Officer Hart's actions were out of fear? Uh, no, despite what Officer Hart may have testified to, uh, I have spent much of my career researching the actions of scared police officers, and I do not believe that Officer Hart was truly frightened on that night. When, if ever, did Officer Hart call for backup? As far as I know, Officer Hart never called for backup. With a degree of scientific and professional certainty, what is your expert opinion on Officer Hart's conduct towards Lugansky? Uh, in my opinion, Officer Hart's use of conduct toward Ray Lugansky was not objectively reasonable. Uh, what was happening that night did not necessitate Officer Hart pulling, let alone shooting her firearm. No further questions, Your Honor. Do you have any questions for this witness? Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to reintroduce myself, Your Honor. My name is John Moylan, and I'll be conducting a cross-examination of Ms. Aubrey Oliger. May I proceed? You may. So, Ms. Oliger, you've worked with cases involving police misconduct in the past, correct? Yes, that's correct. In about 90% of the cases where you found an officer guilty of misconduct, you were overruled by your superior, correct? Yes, I felt that there was a bias against me because I've never been a police officer. So you admit to me and the rest of this court that you've never been a police officer, correct? Uh, no, I've never served as a police officer. So you've never experienced any of the dangers that go along with being a police officer, correct? Uh, no, as I've already testified, I have never been a police officer. 
So you've never been out in the dead of night on a pitch black street facing an armed and dangerous criminal, correct? Uh, no, as I have already testified, I've never been a police officer. So, Miss Oliger, you have received training on how to conduct a thorough investigation, correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. And you believe you conducted a thorough investigation in this case, correct? Uh, yes, absolutely. So you would agree that in a thorough investigation, you may want to review all the witness material in order to get all the facts of the case, correct? Uh, no, this might not be a necessary part of a thorough investigation. And you would agree that in a thorough investigation, you may want to visit the crime scene in order to gain any information from that, correct? Uh, no, again, this might not be a necessary part of a thorough investigation. And you would agree that in a thorough investigation, you would at least want to obtain a photograph of the crime scene, correct? Again, I would not agree because this may not be a necessary part of a thorough investigation. And in this invest or in a thorough investigation, you would want to uh, interview any witnesses in case you have any questions, correct? Uh, no, I don't believe this would be necessary in some cases either, as I did not find it necessary in my investigation, yet I still conducted a thorough investigation. So in this investigation, you never interviewed any of the witnesses, correct? Uh, no, I didn't think that it would uh, positively impact a conclusion I would come to. And in this investigation, you never visited the crime scene, correct? Uh, no, I never felt it necessary. And in this investigation, you failed to obtain a photograph of the crime scene, correct? Uh, no, I do not believe a photograph would have enhanced my investigation at all. And in this investigation, you neglected to read the affidavit of Gail Gordon, the other expert witness to this case, correct? Uh, no, I think that the affidavits that I did review were plenty sufficient in my investigation. And in this investigation, you failed to review the affidavit of Mac Blood, the other eyewitness to this case, correct? Again, this testimony would not have been relevant in my investigation. So, Ms. Oliger, you have at the very least reviewed the affidavit of Matt Hart, correct? Oh, uh, yes, that's correct. You're aware that she says in her affidavit, and I quote, I was extremely worried that Humansky would do something foolish that would put my life in danger, correct? I'm aware that Officer Hart said this, although I don't believe that to be true. Ms. Oliger, I'm not, talk I'm not asking you about your beliefs. I'm talking about whether you have read this in Matt Hart's affidavit, correct? I remember reading this in Officer Hart's affidavit, yes. And you're aware that she repeats in her affidavit this sentiment three more times, correct? Uh, yes, as I have stated, I've read Officer Hart's affidavit. You're aware that Officer Hart confronted who she thought was Humansky on a rather dark night, correct? Yes, although this person was proven to not be Gray Humansky. And you're aware that Officer Hart confronted who she thought was Humansky while under the only working streetlight on the street, correct? Uh, yes, I'm aware of this. And you're aware that Officer Hart believed that she was confronting an armed and dangerous criminal, correct? Yes, although this was clearly not true. And you're aware that Officer Hart had seen Greg Humansky kill someone before, correct? Uh, yes, I'm aware of this. So despite all of these factors, you still feel that it was unreasonable for Officer Hart to feel any kind of threat that night, correct? Uh, yes, I think that my investigation was thorough enough and led me to the accurate conclusion that Officer Hart was not feeling fear and had no reason to shoot Greg Humansky that night. No further questions, Your Honor. May we redirect this? Uh, no, Your Honor. You may step down. <coughs> Any further witnesses? No, Your Honor. The prosecution rests this case. Does the defense have any witnesses it would like to call? Yes, Your Honor. The defense would like to call Matt Hart to the stand at this time. So raise your hand, right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. You may be seated. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Isabella de Burgess, and I will be providing the direct examination for Matt Blood. May I proceed? You may. Please state your name for the court. My name is Matt Blood. How old are you? I am 26 years old. Where do you live? I live on 28 East Street in Duncombe, Massachusetts. In a brief explanation, how are you involved in this case? I work at the Wicked Vinyl, and I was working a closing shift on the night of the shooting, and therefore I saw the entire shooting firsthand. Which other times, if any, have you encountered Officer Nat Hart in uniform besides the incident with Ray Lugansky? There was a robbery at the Wicked Vinyl this past March, and Officer Nat Hart was the officer that arrested the thief. Could you briefly describe this robbery? A man walked into the store and all of a sudden started demanding for all of the cash in the drawer or else he would shoot me. And how did you react to this invader in the store? 
There is a silent alarm under the register, which I pushed a few times while pretending to fumble with the register. And Officer Hart walked in as the thief was asking me about the most valuable records. And upon arriving on scene, what steps, if any, did Officer Nat Hart take in order to arrest the suspect? Officer Nat Hart told the thief to put his hands in the air, said that there was backup on the way and to not bother resisting, placed the thief in the handcuffs, and read him his rights and escorted him to the cruiser. To the best of your knowledge, where was backup in relation to the robbery? I later found out that backup was all the way on the other side of town and was not available. And could you describe the location of Officer Nat Hart's gun throughout this encounter? Officer Nat Hart had her hand near her gun, but she never drew the weapon. And what was Officer Nat Hart's manner like? She was very calm and collected and took charge of the situation at hand. Moving on to the night of the shooting, what were you doing on the night of September 7, 2018? I was working a closing shift at the Wicked Vinyl, like I usually do on Friday nights. And who, if anyone, did you encounter in the store that evening? I encountered a woman that looked exactly like Gray Humansky. How did you react to seeing this woman who looked remarkably like Gray? I was afraid, so I jumped back and almost hit the silent alarm. What, if anything, clued you into the fact that this was not Gray, in fact, but his cousin, or her cousin, Gray? When she started speaking, she spoke broken English, so I knew it was not Gray. And could you describe your interaction with Ray Lugansky? We had a conversation in Tenerbian, and I realized that Ray was Gray's cousin and that they were related. Could you describe your, um, what happened after your discussion with Ray? Um, I went outside the store to get some fresh air, and I had no other customers. In a brief explanation, could you um, summarize the confrontation between Ray and Officer Nat Hart outside the store? Officer Nat Hart yelled Humansky, clearly mistaking Ray for her cousin Gray, and informed her that she missed court and needed to come downtown to, pl to the police station with her, and Ray began walking away from Officer Nat Hart. Where were you in respect to this confrontation? I was right across the street and could see the entire encounter clearly. Did Ray Lugansky speak any English in this encounter? No, she... Question, Honor. Question is leading. Um, as the question does not uh, make an implication for the answer, we're asking if Ray Lugansky spoke any English rather than questioning something of the nature. Ray Lugansky didn't speak any English, correct? I believe this is not leading. So there's that one word that you could add that would make it not leading. Mm -hmm. If any. Okay. <laughs> so, you, you phrase. Or um, what language did Officer or did Ray Lugansky speak in this encounter with Officer Nat Hart? If any. Okay. If any. <laughs> Ray Lugansky. Objection overruled. <laughs> <laughs> Ray Lugansky only spoke Tenerbian. The English that I heard Ray speak in the store was the only thing that clued me into Ray not being Gray. And what happened as a result of this um, lack of communication between the two? Officer Nat Hart told Ray to put her hands in the air, and Ray did not do so and began walking towards Officer Nat Hart until she was only 20 yards away. And what happened directly prior to the shooting of Ray Lugansky? Officer Nat Hart repeated her request for Ray to put her hands in the air while retreating away from Ray, and her voice cracked this time, and Ray still did not do so. And what did you hear through the encounter? I heard Officer Nat Hart say, don't give me a reason to shoot. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay? Um, according to Rule 802, subsection 3, um, excited utterance, as this is clearly an emotional saying, this is something that can be brought up in court. Your Honor. I feel as though there, there hasn't been um, enough foundation laid for it to be qualified as an excited utter utterance. Uh, you want to add a little foundation to this for the excited utterance? Sure. Thank you, Your Honor. And from your perspective, what was Officer Nat Hart's manner like throughout the encounter this time? Um, Officer Nat Hart seemed to fear for her life, and her voice was shaky in, uh, in saying, in telling Ray to put her hands in the air. No further questions, Your Honor. Any cross examination of this witness? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, allow me to reintroduce myself. My 
My name is Aditi Janarme, and I will be conducting the cross-examination of Ms. Nathalie. May I proceed? You may. Uh, Ms. Blood, did you, you know of Gray Humansky before this case, yes? Yes, I did. And you called in an anonymous tip to the FBI regarding Ms. Humansky, yes? Yes, I thought she was Thank endangering you, the let's lives continue. of others. Um, let's move on to the night of the shooting. Ms. Blood, you were working at Wicked Vinyl on the night of September 7th, correct? Yes, I was working at the Wicked Vinyl. And Ms. Lugansky, the victim, walked into the store that night? Yes, she did. Based off the way Ms. Lugansky spoke, you immediately knew she was not Ms. Humansky, yes? When she started speaking broken English, I knew she was not Gray Humansky. Also, right before Officer Hart shot Ray, you went back into the store, yes? Yes, I did. So, you did not see the entire encounter between Officer Hart and Ray Lugansky, correct? I did not see the entire encounter, but I did hear the entire encounter. Also, some of the details are a bit fuzzy in your mind about that night, yes? Some of the details are a bit fuzzy in my Thank mind, you, but Blood. I'm proceeding. Um, let's move on to the part that you did see. You were still outside the store when Mr. Hart asked Ray to come with them to the off, um, to police station, yes? Yes, I was. And you clearly heard Ray's response? Yes, I heard her response. Ray responded with, sorry, I don't understand, in Tenerbian, yes? Yes, she said this in Tenerbian. And based solely off of her tone, you could clearly tell that she sounded confused, yes? Based off of her tone and knowing the Tenerbian language, I could tell she sounded confused. After Ray responded, she turned her back towards Miss, um, towards Miss Hart, walking away from her, yes? Yes. At this point in the encounter, you never, you didn't see, to the best of your um, knowledge, you didn't see Officer Hart uh, pursue or go after Miss Lugansky? Officer not, Hart did not go after her, but she did call after her and told her to put her hands in the air multiple times. So he screamed at her while saying this, yes? Uh, she was talking rather loudly. Also, the Gavish police station is less than a mile away from the location of the crime scene? Yes. And while you were outside, you didn't see Officer Hart call for any backup? No, I did not see this. And finally, you didn't see Ray, while she was facing that Hart, reach for anything such as a gun and a shoulder holster? No, I did not see this. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Can you redirect to this business? No, Your Honor. Can you guys step down? Any further witnesses? Uh, yes, Your Honor. At this time, the defense would like to call Nat Hart to the stand. Ms. Hart, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I so do. I hope you got it. Good evening, Your Honor. My name is Michael Dacey, and I'll be conducting a direct examination of Nat Hart. May I proceed? You may. Would you please state your name and occupation for the court? Uh, my name is Nat Hart, and I'm a member of the Gavish Police Department, and I've been an officer for 34 years. How did you come to be involved in this case? I became involved in this case when I defended myself against Ray Lugansky, who I thought was Gray Humansky at the time. And when did you first meet Gray Humansky? I first met Gray Humansky on the night of May 25th, 2018, when I responded to a possible shooting at 187 South Street, the local Humansky store. And what was Gray doing when you met her? Uh, Gray was standing over a dead body. The body had two bullet wounds, one to the chest, one to the head. Um, Gray was also holding a gun and covered in sweat. And in your own words, could you please explain how Grace's story changed that evening? Uh, well, at first she indicated that the, victim, that the victim had tried to jump her, but when I insisted on a medical examination, her story changed to uh, the victim was trying to rob the store safe. She claimed she had no choice but to shoot the victim twice. And how did Grace say she was able to defend herself? Uh, she said, I guess I'm a really quick draw. Now, when you first arrived on the scene, what did you initially notice about the Humansky store? Uh, I noticed that there were no signs of forced entry, no broken windows, there was not even an alarm going off. And when you went, to, went into the store, what did you initially instruct Gray to do? I instructed Gray to drop her gun. And at this point in time, what else did you notice about the store? Uh, I noticed there were drugs and money out, but I did not find a weapon on or in the vicinity of the victim. And why did you feel that the police should pursue a further investigation into this case? I felt that considering the substantial amount of evidence, it warranted further investigation. Uh, and I wrote memos about outlining this position because the pursuit of justice is a major part of my job. And when did you next see Gray Kamansky? 
Uh, I witnessed a car traveling in excess of the speed limit and I made a routine traffic stop. Uh, when I approached the window, I came to the realization that the driver was Greg Humansky. And what do you remember about that traffic stop? Um, I remember when I told Gray that she, that she should be more careful. She made her hands in the shape of a gun, pointed at me, and said, same to you, officer. And how did this action make you feel? In this instance, I felt threatened. Now, what happened on August 18th? I pulled Gray over again. Why'd you pull over? Um, she swerved into oncoming traffic, endangering herself and the lives of others. And how did Gray act when you approached her vehicle? She immediately became combative. She raised her voice, quickened her tone, and even started yelling at me. Because of this odd behavior, I ordered her out of the vehicle. And how did Gray react to this order? Uh, she refused my command. What did you do next? Again, I ordered her out of the vehicle. Um, and because of this odd behavior, er, and this time she chose to comply, uh, based on this odd behavior and the erratic driving, I conducted a field sobriety test. Did you issue a citation that night? Yes, I issued a citation for negligent driving, and I made Gray aware that because of the gravity of her crime, she would receive a summons in the mail to appear in court, and I also made her aware that um, her appearance in court would be very important, and if she did not, warrant would be issued for her arrest. And how did Gray respond to this? Um, she got back into her car respectfully, but then she revealed her gun to me, which was in her right shoulder holster. Now, let's move on to the night of September 7th. That night, when did you first see the person you thought to be Gray Humansky? Uh, I first saw the person that I thought was Gray Humansky walking into Wicked Vinyl. And why did you pull over when you saw them? I pulled over because I knew there was a warrant out for Gray Humansky's arrest and I was going to apprehend the suspect. Why didn't you call for backup? I did not call for backup because if this person was Gray, I was afraid that they would try to duck into an alley and escape, and backup is not always available. And how did you attempt to apprehend this person? I told Gray that there was a warrant out for her arrest and she would need to come with me to the station. How did she respond to this order? Uh, she turned to and started to walk away from me so that I could not see what she was doing or what she was possibly reaching for. At this point in time, how did you feel about the situation? Uh, with every encounter that Gray and I had ever had, she had chosen to escalate the situation and I was fearful that she would do the same in this instance. Uh, how did you inform who you thought to be Gray, uh, Gray Humansky that she was under arrest? Um, I told her that there was a warrant out for her arrest and she would need to come with me to the station. And what did she do in response to this? Um, she turned and started to walk away from me. And how did this action make you feel? Uh, in this instance, I felt threatened. So at this point in time, what did you do regarding your gun? Um, I, I reached, um, I put my hand on my gun, but I left it inside the holster. And at this point in time, what did you tell Humansky to do regarding her hands? I clearly ordered Humansky to raise her hands. Did she? Um, no, she turned uh, to face me, but she did not raise her hands. What happened next? Um, I again ordered Humansky to raise her hands, and this time I put my gun, I put my hand on my gun, but I still left it inside the holster. How did Humansky respond, or how did you, the person you thought to be Humansky respond to this direction? Um, Humansky, um, would you repeat the question? Uh, how did Humansky respond to this uh, second order to raise her hands? Uh, she turned to face me, but or she raised her hands, and but she began to walk towards me. And what did you do with your gun? Um, I then, because she was walking towards me, I pulled my gun out and I kept it in the low and ready position. What action did you take next? Um, I had my gun in the low and ready position. Um, I, well, I saw her reaching down towards where I knew Gray carried a gun. Um, so I, I had my gun in the low and ready position. Why did you shoot your gun that night? I shot my gun that night because I was sure that my life was in danger. I was afraid and I wish I hadn't been. And how do you feel about the situation now? Uh, I'm sorry that it turned out this way, but given the information I had at the time, I feel I acted accordingly. No further questions, Your Honor. Cross-examination of this witness. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Alyssa Cook, and I'll be conducting the cross-examination of Nat Park. May I proceed? You may. Uh, you received a call from dispatch on Friday, May 25th, a little bit after 8 p.m., concerning a possible shooting at the Humanity Store, yes or no? Yes, I did. At this time, you were approximately two miles away on the corner of Smith and Vine, yes or no? Yes, at 8 p.m. I was, uh, I was there. Which is typical for a Friday night, correct? Yes, at 8 p.m. 
Um, after this it, robbery, your boss decided not to charge Gray with anything, correct? Yes. Um, and this caused you to be the angriest you've ever been in your police uniform, yes or no? Uh, well, I believe this was just more of my passion for justice yes coming no, through. Yes or no, Miss Hart. So, yes, I do remember stating um, that. You spent the next few months trying to change your boss's mind, yes or no? Yes, I did. Even going as far as writing ten memos, yes or no? Well, I believe it's very thorough. It's important to be thorough with my police work. So yes, yes or no, Miss Hart? Yes. A few weeks later, you pulled Gray over for crossing the double yellow line once. Yes or no? Yes, she swerved this into oncoming traffic, endangering herself and the yes lives or no, of others. Officer Hart? I'm sorry, I missed the question. <laughs> uh, this made you immediately assume that she was intoxicated. Yes or no? Uh, this made me fearful that this could be the reason why she swerved into oncoming traffic, yes or no, endangering Ms. Hart. her life. Yes or no, Miss Hart? Yes. On Friday, September 7th, you saw who you believed to be Gray Humanity and Sir Rick and Vinyl, yes or no? Yes. And you knew there was a warrant out for her arrest? Uh, yes, I knew there was a warrant out for Gray Humanity's um, arrest. And you also believe that Gray is prone to violence and exhibits erratic behavior, yes or no? I mean, she definitely has her moments with violence. Yes or no? Yes. Um, you decided it was best to wait in your car for eight minutes then, rather than executing the warrant, yes or no? Well, at this point, I was not sure that the person in the store was Gray Humansky, so I wanted to allow the person to come out of the store so I could confirm the identity before taking any further action. But you waited, yes, you waited for eight minutes in your car, yes or no? Yes, I did, to confirm the identity. Um, and in this time, you did not call for backup? Uh, no, I did not. Um, later, you allowed Gray to get 60 feet away from you before calling out her name, yes or no? Uh, I did not allow her to get 60 feet away from me. Yes or no, Ms. Hart? I believe that calls for further explanation. Did you allow her to get, was she 60 feet away from you when you called out her name? Yes or no? Yes, because she crossed the and street from the store in the time it took me to get out of my car. And her reaction was to turn and walk away from you slowly, yes or no? Uh, she turned so that I could not see what she was reaching for. Um, at this point, you received Ray as a threat, yes or no? Uh, yes, I This made you unlock threat. your holster, yes or no? Yes. Um, and later you took your gun out and pointed it at Ray, yes or no? Yes, I did. Even though she was slowly approaching you with her hands up, yes or no? Um, at that point I saw her reach down towards where I knew Gray carried a gun. She was slowly approaching you, yes or no? And reaching towards where I knew Gray carried a yes gun. Yes or no, Miss Hart? Yes. Ultimately you shot this slow approaching victim, yes or no? I shot the person that was advancing towards me and reaching for what I thought was a gun. Slowly? Yes or no? Yes, slowly, but still advancing. While under the cover of your police cruiser's door? <coughs> yes or no? Yes, but car doors are not And you were involved in this encounter because you were pursuing a warrant, yes or no? Yes, I was. And this warrant was regarding a traffic violation, yes or no? Well, I was not aware of that at the time. But the warrant out for her arrest was because of a traffic violation in this court date, yes or no? I know that now, so yes. So you shot this person over a missed court date on a traffic violation, yes or no? I shot this person because yes they or were no, advancing towards me and I saw them reach down towards where Officer I knew Hart. Gray carried yes, no. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor, no further questions. Any redirect for this witness? No, Your Honor. You may step down. <laughs> Any further witnesses for the defense? Yes, Your Honor. At this time, the defense would like to call Gail Gordon to stand. Ms. Gordon, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. Yes, sir. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Veronica Martinetti, and I will be conducting the direct examination of Gail Gordon. May I proceed? You may. Can you please state your name and address for the court? My name is Gail Gordon, and I live at 1032 Equalizer Drive in Southside, Massachusetts. How did you become involved in this case? I was retained by the attorneys representing Officer Nat Hart in order to reconstruct and examine the forensic evidence in this case and render an opinion as to whether Officer Hart's use of force was objectively <coughs> reasonable. Can you please give a brief overview of your educational history? Yes, um, I received a bachelor's degree in psychology from Fordham University, as well as a master's degree in criminal justice with a concentration in criminal justice and forensic science from the John Jay College of Criminal Justice. And I also participated in the Federal Bureau of Investigations National Academy session number 192 in Quantico, Virginia. Can you please give us a brief overview of your most recent positions? Counsel, could you keep your voice up? Thank you. 
Um, currently, I'm a partner at Gordon and Associates Consulting Incorporated, and I'm also a member of the International Association of Chiefs of Police Forensics Board. What is your experience in police work? I was the Chief of Police of the City of Boston, as well as the Assistant Chief of Police for New York City. Before that, I also worked as a patrolman and detective in Albany in New York City. Do you have any publications? I do. I was recognized for two publications, one entitled Police Use of Deadly Force, and the second entitled Negligent Use of Police Firearms. Do you have any certifications? Yes, I'm board certified in Crime Scene Investigation and Reconstruction. And what does Crime Scene Investigation and Reconstruction entail? It entails the application of science and evidence into looking at a crime scene, including the physical location itself. In this case, it was important to look at the lighting at the time of the incident, the location of the decedent's body, and the distance between the people involved. And what falls under the certification in cases of deadly force? In cases of deadly force, any actions and events that lead up to the event, including the relationship between those involved, must be included in the totality of the circumstances. And what do you mean by totality of the circumstances? All of the actions and events leading up to the eventual decision to shoot. Did you prepare a curriculum vitae for this trial? Yes, I did. Your Honor, may I approach the bench? You may. Your Honor, at this time, the defense would like to mark this document as Exhibit A for, for identification purposes. Uh, so marked. Your Honor, may I approach the bench? You may. I'm handing you what has been marked as Exhibit A. Could you please identify this document? Yes, it is my curriculum vitae. And what is contained within this document? It is an accurate um, description of my professional and educational history. Your Honor, may I approach the bench? You may. At this time, the defense would like to enter this document into evidence as Exhibit A. Any objections? No objections, Your Honor. So, so admitted. Your Honor, at this time, the defense would also like to qualify Gail Gorian as an expert witness in crime scene investigation and reconstruction. Any objection? No objections, Your Honor. So what ex evidence did you examine? It was important to look at the totality of all circumstances for this case, so I looked at a diagram of the crime scene. Whose affidavits did you examine? I examined the affidavits of all the witnesses in this case. Who did you interview while conducting research for this case? I interviewed Officer Nat Hart as well as Mac Blood. So in your professional opinion, was Officer Hart's use of force objectively reasonable? Objection, Your Honor. I feel as though not enough foundation has been laid for this question to be asked of the witness. Your Honor, if I may. I believe that my witness should be able to answer this question due to the fact that she interviewed Nat Hart, so she should have what she believed as reasonable for her. Well, the, the objection is, is to whether there's sufficient foundation. Has, has she learned enough to state that opinion? Is the court aware of what she's learned enough? Well, the past previous three questions like showed what she had conducted in research for this case. Counsel? I feel like that, as if that what exactly the witness has learned from this information that she's acquired and how it pertained to her investigation and how she was and how she reached that conclusion has not been sufficiently explained. Your Honor, uh, so objection overruled. If, if you have doubts about the right of her knowledge, you can get into that and redirect. Thank you, Your Honor. Would you like me to repeat? Yes, please. please. In your professional opinion, was Officer Hart's use of force objectively reasonable? Yes, I believe that her use of force was reasonable um, in order to protect herself from serious bodily harm. What evidence have you learned involving Gray Humansky and her past behavior? I learned that Gray Humansky shot and killed an intruder of her store, um, as I quote from her affidavit, once in the chest and once in the head. And why is, this not, why is the knowledge of this event important? Since Officer Hart was the responding officer to this situation, Officer Hart had seen that Gray Kamansky was able to use a firearm with accuracy during a confrontation. What information did you learn regarding Humansky's gun? Objection, Your Honor. I feel as if the question it has more prejudicial value than probative value. As in today's day and age, the very act of quoting a gun brings many negative connotations, but I feel like unfairly demeans the character of Gray Kamansky. Any response? I 
I believe that the answer to this question should simply be the observation of the research that this witness has conducted, not necessarily any prejudicial value. Why is knowledge of the gun relevant to this case? Uh, we believe it shows um, Nat Hart's belief in Gray Humansky's um, conduct with the gun. Protection overall, right? Even in Massachusetts, just owning a gun is not prejudicial. <laughs> Second Amendment. <laughs> you may ask the question again. What information did you learn regarding Humansky's gun? Um, both Officer Hart and Greg Humansky affirmed that there was a gun present during the traffic stop on August 18th. As well, Officer Hart was aware that Greg Humansky carried the gun in a right shoulder holster. So why did Officer Hart attempt to stop Gray Humansky on September 7th? There was a warrant out for her arrest. What was the lighting at the time of this incident? The only working street light was right behind Officer Hart, and that would make it sure that the light would shine out in front of her, giving her the best view of the situation and the suspect. And what did you learn about the night of the shooting from your interview with Officer Hart? Officer Hart instructed the suspect to stop moving, raise her hands, and interlock her fingers. However, the suspect continued to walk towards Officer Hart, and at that time, Officer Hart had her weapon in a low and ready position as trained. How long would it have taken for the offender to remove the weapon and fire at Officer Hart? It would have taken less than one second for a shot to be fired by the suspect. How far away was Lugansky when Officer Hart discharged her weapon? Um, Lugansky was only 20 yards away. Why did Officer Hart fire her weapon? Officer Hart saw the suspect reach into the right jacket pocket, which is where Officer Hart knew that Gray Humansky kept her firearm. As she believed that the suspect was Gray Humansky at the time, she feared for her life and she fired one shot. What are police officers trained to do in cases of potential harm? In cases of potential harm, police officers are trained to use their weapons in self-defense. And how are these conclusions made? These conclusions are made into by taking into account the totality of the circumstances, not just the events of that night. Officer Hart took all of the information she had, including her past interactions with Greg Humansky and knowledge of her behavior, and compared it to the, the um, actions of the figure that night in order to make her decision. And in your opinion, within reasonable degree of your professional certainty, did Officer Hart act reasonably? Yes. No further questions, Any cross-examination of this witness? If there is your honor. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Nick Belusha. I'll be conducting the cross examination of Gail Gordon. May I proceed? You may. You served for a very short time as patrol cop, right? Um, as patrol cop, I would say so, but would I have it, been Would in it be correct to say that you have been time. out of an active police force for over 10 years now? I do still need to it's keep up with It's true that you were approached and subsequently retained by the defendant's <laughs> lawyers, yes or no? I was. You have said that location is very important to this case to help determine it to be able to observe the incident, correct? Yes. Yet, you never went to the crime scene a single time, now, did you? I looked at the diagram and I felt that's all the information I needed. You reviewed all the affidavits in this case? Yes. You're aware that the defendant is the only one claiming to have seen the victim allegedly reach towards her jacket, right? Officer Hart was also the only person with that vantage point, so I am aware of that. Would that factor be important when considering the totality of the circumstances? I don't believe that it's important that no other figure has that because no other figure did see that exact moment from that exact Would it be important way. to consider the fact that the victim had a very limited understanding of the English language? No, because Officer Hart did not know that at the time. Officer Hart shot Ray Lugansky to death, correct? Yes. Ms. Lugansky had no warrant out for her arrest when she was shot to death by Officer Hart. Officer Hart believed that it was great humanity. Officer Hart did not see a brandished weapon when she proceeded to draw her weapon, yes or no? She did not. Officer Hart did not see a brandished weapon when she proceeded to fire and kill, fire her weapon and kill Ray Lugansky, correct? She had reason to believe that there was a weapon. In your affidavit, you have called Mrs. Lugansky an alleged victim. Yes. In the light of the fact that Mrs. Lugansky was fatally shot to death, while not brandishing a weapon, while having no warrants out for her arrest, would it be fair to call her a victim instead of an alleged victim? At the time, I just meant that um, victimhood is decided by the court, so I do not mean anything negative by that word. Officer Hart was on a patrol in her police car right before she fatally shot Ray Lugansky, correct? Yes. 
As Macklett stated in his, in his affidavit, the victim sounded confused, which is different than refusing to comply, correct? From off of her perspective, no. As a former police officer, you would agree that a police officer's core duty is to protect and serve the community? Yes. You have taught young, impressionable police officers on this core duty, yes or no? I have. Yet, you tell these young, impressionable police officers that it's better to be judged by 12 than carried out by 6, yes or no? At the last resort. That yes. quote promotes self-preservation over protection yes, of no. the very community, yes or no? This uh, question is <laughs> If I may, Your Honor, I do not see anything <laughs> argumentative about the question that you asked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, overall. So the quote that you previously said, you have told these young officers, that quote promotes self-preservation over the protection of the public, yes or no? I don't think it does because I advocated as a last resort. No further questions, Your Honor. Can you redirect? No, Your Honor. Defense, have any further witnesses? You may step down. Thank you. Defense, press your order. Uh, so normally we would go into closing arguments. To, would the counsels like a minute, just a minute, to confer with the person giving the closing argument? Are you ready to go? We're all, set. all right, let's get into it. <laughs> Allow me to reintroduce myself, Your Honor. My name is Victoria Farrington, and I will be conducting the closing argument for the defense. May I proceed? You may. Your Honor, the prosecution stands here today with an unreasonable expectation of perfection. And we, the defense, have provided an overwhelming amount of evidence to prove that on the night of September 7th, the defendant, Officer Hart, had to defend or die. Resistance and reputation. These are the two key factors that demonstrate Officer Hart's reasonableness in her use to use deadly force. In the case, Graham v. Connor, it is asserted that this case must be judged by the perspective of Officer Hart because hindsight will always be 2020. Furthermore, it recognizes that police officers are forced to make split-second decisions giving them a wide zone of protection under the law. This means that Officer Hart's perception is the most important thing that was testified to today. On the night of September 7th, Officer Hart was fearful of becoming Greg Humansky's next fatality. In the case, Conlog v. Hamilton, it asserts that two requirements are needed to be met in order for a police officer to be justified in his or her use of deadly force. The first one is that the suspect poses an immediate threat. As testimony shows today, Greg Humansky is known for carrying a firearm, is deadly with said firearm, and even stated herself, I'm a quick draw. Furthermore, Ray Lugansky's actions on the night of September 7th escalated the situation, putting Officer Hart's life in danger. When her hands reached towards her shoulder pocket, where Officer Hart knew Ray Lugansky kept a gun, it would have taken less than one second for Gray Humansky to shoot and kill Officer Hart. The second requirement in the case Conlog v. Hamilton is the suspect is clearly warned in a timely manner. The prosecution's own witness, Lee Bugginall, and Mac Blood both testified to this clear and timely warning. Not only did Officer Hart warn Gray Humansky, who was thought to be Gray Humansky, with a physical warning, but also through a verbal warning. Case law states that there are no magic words when it comes to a clear and timely warning, so the low and ready gun position satisfies the law. The prosecution will try and argue that this was not clear, considering the fact that Gray Lugansky only speaks to Nervian. However, Officer Hart did not know this at the time, and that is clearly the definition of 2020 hindsight, prohibiting it in your decision. Gray Humansky gave Officer Hart every reason to perceive her as a threat. The first time they met, she was standing over a dead body. She shot a man twice, 
killing him instantly, once in the head and once in the chest, showing her precision and skilled gunmanship. It is also important to note that during these traffic stops, Officer Hart became aware of the fact that Humansky keeps her gun on her right shoulder, where Ray happened to reach the night she was fatally shot. The other important um, case law for this is willfulness. And the prosecution has in no way pr proved beyond a reasonable doubt that um, Officer Hart's actions had a bad purpose. Her purpose was protection. The case, Screws v. United States, asserts that an officer must have a purpose in order to deprive a victim of his or her constitutional rights. Your Honor, it is absurd to say that Officer Hart was trying to deprive Ray Lugansky, or Gray Humansky for that matter, of her constitutional rights. Officer Hart was simply trying to execute a warrant. When the suspect decided to escalate the situation, Officer Hart had to protect her town and herself. Officer Hart detected a threat and protected her life. All the facts that the prosecution have laid out today are based off of conjecture. Lee Buggenall cannot physically prove that Gray Humansky was adhering to the speed limit on August 11th. Nor can she physically prove that it was Officer Hart who drove by three times on the night of the shooting. Not to mention that all this evidence is being testified by an FBI agent who does not get involved when her suspect is lying dead on the ground. Furthermore, the testimony of Aubrey Oliger was nothing short of questionable. She interviewed no one in this case and based her entire opinion off of three pieces of paper in a drawing that wasn't even entered into evidence today. I would also like to point out the fact that her decisions have been overturned 90% of the time. Members of the jury, I would like to point out the fact that today all three cross-examinations cut off the defense's witnesses and did not let them finish their answers. That begs the question, could they not handle what was about to be testified to? Yeah. Officer Hart is a decorated and well-respected officer <laughs> in the town of Gavish. Serving for the past 30 years, <clears throat> she has never had a true accusation claimed against her. Being a cop is a dangerous occupation and one that is valued in our society. Officer Hart wakes up every day and puts on her police uniform, not so that she can abuse it, but rather to serve her community and herself and the people that she loves. Simply, she does not have the time, nor the will, nor the effort to hone in on one citizen of the town. Resistance and reputation. These are the two key factors that demonstrate Officer Hart's reasonableness. And I ask you, the members of the jury, to rule in favor of this respected officer who made nothing short of a reasonable reaction and find Officer Hart not guilty. Thank you. Prosecution. Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Seto Dave, and I'll be providing the closing statement for the prosecution. May I proceed? You may. Members of the jury, we, the prosecution, representing the United States of America, stand before you today asking that you recognize the violent vendetta that was led by a perpetrator concealed under the color of our very own law. We have met the burden of proof by proving beyond a reasonable doubt that Officer Nat Hart was acting, was acting excessively when she willfully killed Ray Lugansky. We demand that justice is provided for the death of Ray Lugansky so that her family and the entire community can be given some sort of closure over this terrible and tragic event. Your Honor, we have shown today that Officer Hart willfully killed Ray Lugansky. In the case United States v. Murdoch, willfulness denotes acting with a bad purpose, and clearly the actions of Officer Hart show this bad purpose. May 25th, 2018. This is the day that Officer Hart's violent vendetta against Greg Humansky first began. On this day, even though the evidence overwhelmingly shows that Greg Humansky was guilty of no crime, Officer Hart had a predisposition that she was simply unable to relinquish. Officer Hart herself testified today that she wrote over 10 memos to her police chief, explaining why Greg Humansky should be convicted of a crime. 
These actions clearly show that Officer Hutt had a violent vendetta against Grey Humanity. When these memos didn't work, she had to find some other way to fulfill her violent vendetta. On August 11, 2018, a veteran FBI agent, Lee Bugginall, testified today that on this day, Officer Hutt pulled over Ms. Bugginall and Ms. Humanity for supposed negligent operation of a motor vehicle, and she proceeded to harass both of them. Then a mere seven days later, Officer Hutt pulled them over again and proceeded to search their entire vehicle and slam them against the car. Members of the jury, this simply does not sound like normal police interactions. Why would Officer Hart choose to do this unless she had a violent vendetta against Gray Humanity? The case United States versus Murdoch further denotes that willfulness is an act that is intentional rather than accidental. Today we heard Officer Hart herself testify that on Friday nights around 8 p.m., she was usually about two miles away from the Humanity store. Yet, on the night of the shooting, also a Friday night, also around 8 p.m., Officer Hart was simply right across the street from the Schmansky store. Since the defense today did not even try, attempt to justify this discrepancy, we must assume that on the night of the shooting, Officer Hart was ignoring her fundamental duties as a police officer in order to pursue her violent vendetta against Greg Schmansky. Furthermore, the case Graham v. Connor asserts that when judging how much physical coercion to use when effecting a seizure, one must consider the severity of crime at issue. In the case in front of us today, the severity of crime, simply missing a traffic violation hearing. The amount of physical coercion used, shooting and killing an innocent woman. That's right, Officer Hart shot and killed an innocent woman over a missed traffic violation hearing. These are simply so disproportionate. In the case Stamps versus Town of Framingham, the court asserted that it is a violation of the Fourth Amendment to point a firearm at an individual that creates a risk of harm disproportionate with any police necessity. Through the testimony of Ms. Audrey Oliver, an expert in the field of police misconduct, we learned today that Officer Hart violated police protocol and completely escalated the situation when she reached for her weapon without any knowledge or indication that Ray Lugansky also possessed a deadly firearm. We also learned through the, testing, through the testimony of Ms. Audrey Oliver that when this incident happened, Officer Hart was standing behind her car door. And through the testimony of Ms. Lee Bugginall, we learned that Ray Lugansky was 60 feet away with her hands in the air. Picture that situation. Officer Hart is standing behind her car door, while Ray Lugansky is 60 feet away with her hands in the air. The defense today tried to show that Officer Hart was simply acting out of self-defense. But clearly, in the situation we presented to you today, there was no reason for Officer Hart to reach for her weapon and kill Ray Lugansky. Officer Hart's testimony today was full of inconsistencies. None of the other witnesses present at the scene of the killing could testify to whether or not to the fact that Ray Lugansky reached into her jacket for a weapon. The only person that could testify to this fact was Officer Hart herself, the woman who is most invested in perpetrating this lie. This is the only fact that could even begin to justify the officer's actions, yet it is disputed by every single witness besides the officer herself. Lastly, we want to leave you with one fact regarding this case. Officer Hart had eight minutes to call for backup. Eight minutes. If she had called for backup, this entire situation could have been avoided. Yet instead, she chose to take the law into her own hands. Members of the jury, we ask that you recognize that Officer Hart did exactly opposite of what her job entailed. Rather than protecting the citizens of her community, she in fact put citizens' lives into danger by ignoring her fundamental duties as a police officer in order to pursue her violent vendetta. Members of the jury, we ask that you find Officer Hart guilty of violating the fundamental laws that are supposed to keep our community safe. All right, excellent. Well, so first, let's start with a round of applause. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, in a real trial, what would happen next is the judge when would then instruct the jury on the law they're supposed to follow. This usually takes about 45 minutes. I was trying to pull up the reasonable doubt instruction, but my phone cannot pull that up. So you will be instructed that reasonable doubt you are to find in favor of the defendant if you can all agree that there is reasonable doubt. You all have to be unanimous. 
Um, you have to convict to a moral certainty. So if you feel beyond a reasonable doubt that the government has proven its burden that the defendant violated 18 U.S.C. 242, that under the color of the law, Ray Lugansky, uh, excuse me, Gray Humansky, <laughs> Uh, used excessive co force in effecting a seizure. Oh, no, Officer Hart. <sighs> this is not written right. This is not written right. All right. If you all agree, so here's the question, jury. Can you all agree on one verdict? So can everyone agree on guilty or not guilty? So sometimes when you first go back into the jury room, they'll just do a quick straw poll and they'll say, yes. hey, everyone, does everyone agree not guilty? If you agree, raise. If you agree that the defendant is not guilty, raise your hand. Yes. Who's yeah, who feels there's a certainty, or excuse me, who who feels that there's a doubt, yeah, some kind of reasonable doubt. Reasonable doubt. That the defendant is guilty. Wait, say again. Reasonable doubt. So re there's reasonable doubt that the defendant is guilty. That the defendant is not guilty. We're not. <laughs> this is just an initial poll to get a sense of the of, meaning. Of the group. Meaning, when the defendant, the defendant had reason to shoot, had a valid reason to shoot, right? So if you find that they had a valid reason to shoot, you would find that there would be a reasonable doubt, right? So how many? All right, how many find that to a moral certainty you feel the defendant did something wrong? All right, so you know what that means? It means you guys are hung. You are a hung jury, and the result of today is a mistrial, and you all have to do it again. <laughs> so there you go. And that's the criminal justice system for you. No one wins. <laughs> So I would like to thank everyone for attending and coming, and let's give the team another round of applause.